What's up, senor? You look pretty chill over there. It's so hot today. I feel like I got a little bit sunburned. You know what they call September in Tahoe? Local summer. <laughs> <laughs> How was the weekend? What did we do this weekend? Um, incredible. We decided to take Kelly Kapowski out, that's our Catalina 27, out for a night at Anchor. Ended up staying two nights in Skunk Harbor, which looks like a mix between Pacific Northwest, the Baths in the Caribbean, I don't know, tropical mountain paradise. And there's zero wind this whole week. So we didn't get a lot of sailing in this weekend, but we got cruising and anchoring and cooking aboard and swimming, mm -hmm. foil boarding. Foil boarding. <laughs> But both of the 22s, the Catalina 22s, are already out of the water. And this one's coming out tomorrow. So we're kind of wrapping up the season and starting to winterize all of the boats, which is, it happened fast, kind of bittersweet, but it was an incredible summer. I added up some of our stats from the sailing school this summer. So we had four sailboats operating in two different locations, which is a big one for us because we always wanted to do kind of half ocean, half mountains. And this is the first year we sort of operated year round like that. So it's pretty exciting. We had 76 people take our CA1 course up here in Tahoe, a four day course. And we actually just opened bookings for summer 23 for that course. A uh, hundred plus people that went out sailing on this boat with Ben. Uh, two. This number is a, a small one, but very important. We got to do our first couple of therapy sailing sessions, which we've been trying to get that program sort of launched for over a year, and it finally came true. So we got to take out some injured athletes from the High Five Foundation, and then also uh, five women, either cancer survivors or people that are currently uh, fighting cancer, and take them sailing for a day, and that was really special. Um, to see, I don't know, how important it was for them to be around each other and, um, and just be out on the water and get to chill for a day. So we definitely want to expand that program and do more therapy sailing days in the future. Let's see, we had 19 crew that took our intro to cruising course with us in August, which means they slept on the Tika for a few days. We sailed together, cooked together, drank together, um, got into the random mischief that we always do on the intro to cruising courses. But uh, yeah, cruising around the bay has been super fun. There's all these different anchorages. We went to a ball game at McCovey Cove. Um, we anchored over at Angel Island. We had really good conditions. So that was super, super fun. Mm -hmm. So after the boats are winterized, we're literally moving onto Lentica. So we've rented our condo out and we are moving aboard to start prepping Lentica to sail south. So we're, we're taking her down to Mexico, which is super exciting. Really cool to think about. A lot that's going to happen in between that too. We have Fleet Week coming up. Uh, that's October 7th, 8th and 9th, mm -hmm. right? Then after that, we are flying to the Annapolis Boat Show. So if you're interested in, in saying hi or any of the times that we're going to be doing talks or meetups or anything like that, uh, check our Instagram for those details. But I'm doing a pretty cool talk with Brian about all the shit that went wrong during circumnavigation. So we're going to try and tell stories from the days before we started filming. This should be pretty fun to do. And then when we get back from the boat show, we have about 12 days of boat work. So installing water maker, um, all kinds of stuff on the list of getting Lentica ready for the offshore trip to Mexico. And then November 2nd, we're flying to Palau, which I'm incredibly stoked about, doing a live aboard dive trip with the same company we did uh, the Galapagos dive trip with. So we're gonna be putting out episodes for that and just so stoked to go to Palau. It's been on my list for so long. Then we come back from Palau and have 12 days before our first students join us to go to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds intense, but it's perfect. I'm really excited. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the trip to Mexico is really exciting. We're gonna be doing legs offshore um, from San Francisco, ending up in La Paz over the period of like two months. Um, and those legs are gonna be experience-based learning trips uh, that we're offering to our CA1 alumni and and um, putting out to the world. So it's really, really special to have Cruisers Academy in a place where after the years of COVID and starting the school on the lake, we're actually about to start the real mission of offshore sailing and teaching people that. So I'm very happy and stoked and proud of, of where it's at right now. And after that, 
maybe just not plan anything for a little bit. <laughs> it's almost done. Well, what's happening? One of the questions people always ask is what's happening with Sharky? Oh, what's happening with Sharky? That's a good question. With the shark dog. Yeah. Well, Sharky is going to come with us on the adventure. She's lived with us on Lintica already. Last winter we lived on Lintica for almost the whole winter and she lived aboard for that. Um, we are still working on the potty training situation. So if anyone has any hot tips for getting uh, the dogs to go potty on board, let us know. But yeah, she's gonna come. She might skip out on the first leg. The first leg's gonna be from San Francisco to Santa Barbara and it could be gnarly weather. We don't really wanna put her through that. So um, if she skips out on that part, she'll definitely hop on in Santa Barbara. And she's going to Mexico. <laughs> she's going to Mexico, Sharky. You wanna go to Mexico? I think we just found our thumbnail. I mean, I think she'd fit right in. So she's coming. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I think you posted to ask people some questions. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Um, did anybody respond with questions? <laughs> yeah, there's some. Should we go through them? Let's do it. Okay. Okay. What do you do when you're not running the sailing school? Uh, we go sail. <laughs> <laughs> no, we uh, we have a couple different things that we like to do. I have a horse, actually. He's a, a young Mustang. And so I have been spending a lot of time with him over the last couple years since I've had him. I'm kind of going on a, a journey of, uh, I guess I could say training him, but really I'm he's learning from me and I'm learning from him. And it's, it's a very, very cool experience. Most of my spare time is spent in a sauna. <laughs> I'm getting real addicted to sweating. I call it changing my oil. Nice. Do either of you surf? No, I kind of surfed a little bit in Florida, uh, in Cocoa Beach when I was going to high school, but never really got good enough to be like a real surfer. So we always talk about it, but hopefully this will change now when we go to Mexico. We're gonna start surfing. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Right. What's, what's an unexpected surprise from the adventure of starting a sailing school? Um, what's a surprise about the sailing school? Mm -hmm. uh, it's working. <laughs> I think that something that I didn't consider when we started this is how many cool people we would meet. And I always say sailing is the best filter. So just the fact that people are interested in sailing and interested in learning about nature and being self-sufficient and working as a crew just filters through to like the best people. Are we ever gonna hop on Delos again? Slash, do we have any plans to meet up with them? Hmm. Two things. <laughs> First thing is sailing with like dates and plans is really, really hard. And then the second thing is doing that with two separate boats <laughs> is really hard too. Um, I don't know if we're, we have so much going on, we're probably not going to hop on Delos like as crew or to sail with Delos. But we are sailing to the Sea of Cortez this winter and Delos is in the Sea of Cortez. So it would take something crazy for us not to cross paths in the Sea of Cortez but I can't we don't know if that's gonna really happen but that would be the plan would be to do a couple weeks of cruising buddy boating with Delos on Lantica. Nice. That would be surreal wouldn't it? Yeah it'd be trippy. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay someone wants to know our five-year plan. <laughs> okay go ahead. All right in five years uh -huh. this is what's gonna be going on. We have uh, a house on land, okay, with maybe some animals running around. Mm -hmm. Most likely two children running oh. around. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Tahoe School doing really, really well, but us um, not taking a full on teaching role, but maybe more of a managerial and admin role with mm -hmm. it, uh, with the occasional uh, day sailing. Mm -hmm. um, Lintica down in the Sea of Cortez mm -hmm. doing intro to cruising trips. And then a bigger, probably 60 to 65 foot offshore sailboat. Uh, doing offshore passages in the North Pacific, taking people on long passages, um, Alaska all the way down to Mexico, Mexico, Hawaii, Hawaii, Alaska, all the way down, that kind of thing. I like it. Um, that's five years from now. Yep, we're on the same page. That's it. <laughs> Final question. Final question, and we gotta jump in the water. Okay, your dad wants to know where you get your good looks. From my grandpa. <laughs> His dad. Uh, 
probably all the weed that he smoked before he ate <laughs> my mother. Oh my god. Okay, done. <laughs> Jump in. Cut.